name is Michael Busby. I am a Texas family law and divorce attorney. In this presentation, I will discuss and give the grounds to modify a final order affecting the parent-child relationship or establishing the parent-child relationship, which may be a final decree of divorce as it applies to conservatorship or possession access to a child which also includes who determines the primary residence of the child. Under the Texas Family Code, there are three bases in which a parent or a party may modify a final order. The modification would be in the child's best interest and the circumstances of a child, a conservator, or a party affected by the order have material and substantially changed since the earlier of the date of the rendition of the order or the date of the signing of a mediated or collaborative law settlement agreement on which the order is based. This is the first grounds. The second grounds is the child is at least 12 years of age and has expressed to the court in chambers the child's preference as to who would have the right to designate that child's primary residence or the conservator who has the exclusive right to designate the primary residence of the child has voluntarily relinquished the primary care and possession of the child to another for at least six months. Generally, people start with custody and modifications many times are filed to change who has the right to determine the residence. But there are also modifications that are filed to change up the rights and duties to also change conservatorship. The types of conservatorship in Texas are going to be joint managing conservatorship, but then also sole possessory conservatorship. Under the conservatorship, there are 10 rights that are subject to manipulation. That would be the right to determine the residence, the right to receive child support, the right to make invasive medical decisions, for the child, the right to make psychological and or psychiatric decisions for the child, education decisions for the child, the right of agency to act as the child's agent, the right to take legal action on behalf of the child, the right to manage a child's estate, the right to earnings and services of the child, and then the right to consent to the child joining the military or marrying under the age of 18. In Texas, you no longer can consent to your child getting married on the age of 18, but you can go to another state and another state may allow your child to get married under the age of 18. Whether or not there's been a material substantial change is going to be the initial threshold requirement. Now, under the second element, which is the child is 12 years old, you still have to do a best interest analysis as to the child being 12 years old and expressing a preference. So many times as the child hits 14 or 15 and there are disciplinary problems with one household and another parent looks to making a move to claim custody and they use those disciplinary incidences to propel them to be in the primary, then the court can talk to the child, but as the court talks to the child, the court will also look at the best interest and whether or not the move is done because perhaps one parent is spoiling the child and encouraging that child to behave inappropriately, wherein the parent who has had primary care has done all the legwork and has been there this whole time with the child and uh, gotten the child pretty far along. Many times you'll see this with a obligor who is substantially behind in arrears and then uh, they'll try to use the change in custody to leverage some type of forgiveness of their arrears. Uh, this is pretty common. Now the courts, as the courts look at material and substantial change, there are various um, events that would occur and as they occur as far as the courts being together on those changes and uniform it's not 
So to say that a court will hold in one region of Texas that a remarriage is enough to grant a modification, uh, I've seen that where in another court in another region will say no. But usually the fact-intensive analysis will look at remarriage, the buying of a house, a relocation, a new baby that is born to the couple that just got remarried. And so you don't want to just say, I got remarried, it's a couple weeks later, now I can modify and I want custody because I have a new family and with the new family I'm more stable than uh, the current primary. Usually that will not get you there. But uh, the, the, the general events that occur that historically we have looked at that we've obtained modifications would be remarriage, the loss of a job or a new job coupled with the relocation, the um, school in which the child attends, the grades are failing, the birth of a new child, the health of the uh, parents uh, as to how they are doing, if there has been a disability and someone has went on Social Security, sometimes that disability will allow them to stay at home and they could spend more time with the child if they still have capacity to watch the child and then they have a fixed income. Uh, sometimes that is a good event because previously they were working themselves to death and they could not um, maintain a heavy work schedule and still uh, spend time with the child and with a finding of disability perhaps uh, they can get their health in order and then as the child goes to school during the day um, they can uh, spend the time in the evening with the child. I've filed modifications on those grounds and been successful uh, on those grounds. So as you look to these different elements in order to prepare a modification, the best interest is going to be something that the court also looks at. And these uh, are pretty much in most uh, cases. And so that is in the Holly opinion. And so the uh, best interest has subcategories of events that you would look at. And that would be the desires of the child the emotional and physical needs of the child now in the future, the emotional and physical danger to the child now in the future, the parental abilities of the individuals seeking custody, the programs available to assist these individuals to promote the best interests of the child, the plans for the child by these individuals or by the agency seeking custody, the stability of the home or proposed placement, the acts or omissions of the parent which may indicate that the existing parent-child relationship is not a proper one and then any excuse for the act or omissions of the parent and so this is a part of the fact examination that you would do with your lawyer uh, you would develop out uh, these elements now when you have a situation where one parent which is the final uh, the, the final item which is used to file a modification, which is the other parent and or party to a case, which could be a grandmother or a relative, has surrendered possession of the child. So what you'll see many times is that the primary will not like the school district they're in. And as they don't like the school district, they'll want to use someone else's address so as they use someone else's address for school purposes, then they say that the child's not really switch residences. They just use that address for school purposes. So the six months, as far as having actual possession of the child, many times is contested. And as it's contested, then you'll end up facing, as you file a new case, a writ of habeas to return the child. They'll say that they didn't voluntarily give the child over and that it was only done for uh, a short time or it was done for school purposes. And then you'll have to look at the actual nights that the child spent the night at which residence. And uh, that also can be uh, time consuming. Uh, again, my name is Michael Busby and I am a Texas family law attorney. These are your grounds to modify a Texas Family Law Final Order 
to change up possession and access and or conservatorship in a final order that establishes or affects the parent-child relationship, which may be a final decree of divorce. Thank you for watching.